coffee beans. How's it brewing? I wanted to do a really quick face-to-face -face introduction while I had the chance. I know this is kind of unusual now, but I had one of you coffee beans reach out to me with some craft kit ideas. If you ever see craft kits that you would like me to do, make sure you share them with me. You can send them to me on YouTube or on Instagram because I will definitely look into it. So I want to say a huge thank you to Caitlin Eaton for reaching out to me with like the longest list ever of ideas. And I really, really took inspiration from what they suggested and I went to Michael's and I got the cutest craft kit from Klutz, which I love Klutz. Klutz, if you ever want to reach out to me, I am here for it. And I got this kit, that's so cute! <laughs> I've already done a klutz kit once before, which was this super cute llama pillow. And it's like a full tutorial on how to sew if you're a beginner sewer. And I love this pillow so much. That's my favorite. He is always sitting in the back, just kind of giving a really cute winky face for all of you coffee beans. If you want to see this video, I will put a link in the iCard and in the description. Caitlin Eaton reached out to me because they enjoyed that video so much and they wanted me to do some other klutz kits. So I found this one, which is a little bit of sewing, but it's these super cute little donut animals. Like stop, <laughs> they are so cute. And so in typical klutz fashion, it came with a full book tutorial. And then this is a whole box with all of the materials. So let's go ahead and make some super cute animals. Before we do the unboxing, let me introduce you to my new unboxing knife. This was actually a horseshoe that I forged myself into this awesome knife. You can find all of those pictures on my Instagram. Now, as you can see, this book has a ton of directions. You can see all of these different animals we're gonna be making and they are all super cute. And it even shows you every single thing you get inside the box and full directions. Now, inside this box, we got a whole bunch of felt pieces in the shape of donuts and icing. We also got this vacuum seal bag of stuffing and felt eyeballs and noses. We got some needles. And then we also got this, which I wasn't totally sure <laughs> what it was at first, but it turns out it's a super cute donut box. It says, donut worry, be happy. Then on the front, it says, donut start the party without us. And donut worry, we won't. <laughs> so cute. I love that they included this. So here's everything we got. And looking at this book, this donut kind of looks like Mariah Elizabeth's character, Georgie. Does anybody else see that? I've noticed in recent months that a lot of companies have begun to release like socks or cute shirts, or in this case, a craft kit with a pineapple duck. And it looks a lot like Georgie, so I'm skeptical. But I had a hard time deciding who exactly I wanted to start with, but of course we have to start with Straw Bunny because, I mean, it's a bunny. We kind of have to, right? Like, that's the rule. <laughs> I mean, I am bunny DIY, so I feel like we have to start. So to get started, I went ahead and started to gather all of my supplies, but I quickly realized that what it was telling me to grab was kind of inconsistent with what was actually in the box. So you see here it says to get five large white circles, but there was only three large white circles and I scanned through the whole book to see if I was missing something or or what was going on. But even the picture in the front of the book shows three large white circles. So I think what happened is all of these instructions were written and then the project was actually changed and there were some small parts in the instructions that got missed. So I think these are some like smaller typos, but you know, as long as I know I'm not missing anything or messing up, then that's okay. You just have to be kind of careful. Oh my gosh, this bunny, this bunny. Oh my gosh. I didn't even realize this bunny was in here. I absolutely freaked out. Look at how cute it is with its little like burrito thing. I don't know what this is. I love this bunny. I want one. I want one. I want one today. Like today? Can I have one today, please? It's so cute. All right, I got everything I need so all of this can move on back. 
So this whole project is meant to be a sewing kit. It gives you needles, it gives you embroidery floss, it gives you the felt. Now I'm an experienced seamstress. I've made cosplays for years. I've made costumes for theater productions for years. I've made my own clothes. I've made plushies, I've made pillows, I've made blankets. And can I just say, this was so hard to sew. <laughs> I could not get my needle through this freaking piece of felt. The felt was too small, it was too small of a circle. I even was gonna sacrifice my finger and hit my finger with the needle and it wouldn't go through, it would not go through. Just know, I was gonna sacrifice my finger for you and it wouldn't work. <laughs> so I was about to give up, I got really frustrated and I thought, wait, not everybody who watches me sews and not everybody who wants to do this kit sews. So if you ever wanted to do this kit and you don't know how to sew, you potentially then wouldn't do the kit. So, what is an item that most crafters have in their craft room that they can use to make these donuts? Hot glue! Duh! So, instead of sewing all of these donuts together, I'm gonna show you how you can put it together with some hot glue, nice and simple, so that way anyone can do it. And instead of trying to hot glue these little tiny itty bitty eyes to the donuts, I'm just gonna use fabric paint. That makes it so much easier to do the details like the faces and the sprinkles. If you decide to make this kit and you use hot glue like I did, make sure you show me on Instagram. You can tag me at bunnydiy because I would really love to see. Or if you actually get down to business and sew these, please show me because I would love to see your awesome skills. So I started by gluing the ears together with these white and pink pieces. Then I applied a little bit of glue to the ends and stuck them onto the donut. These are supposed to be kind of 3D, so I only glued the tip. Now we do still have to do a little bit of sewing because certain items like the bunny's tail and the top of the carrot need to be kind of ruffled. So the best way to do it is to fold the little discs into tacos and you stack them on top of each other on the thread and then tie the thread into a knot and it sort of bunches them all together into like kind of a ruffle shape. This is a technique we're going to be using for other animals in this project, so make sure you don't throw away that needle and thread because you can use it here. You could definitely still use the hot glue, so don't worry. I just think the sewing in this instance is actually a little bit easier. Then using hot glue, I stuck it to the donut. Now we're going to make the carrot the same way. I glued the two orange pieces together and then made the little top of the carrot with the green felt and thread. Then I hot glued that together. Then hot glued the whole thing right by the bunny's ear. It's supposed to be a super cute carrot beret. <laughs> like a hair clip, I guess. I kept reading it as carrot beret, so I was thinking she was French for a minute. <laughs> now I'm using my fabric paint to make cute little eyeballs, and they definitely came out a little crooked, but I mean, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I think you could also use Sharpie or fabric pens if you don't have any fabric glue. And I gave her cute little eyelashes. Look at how cute she is, she's so fancy. I still think she's French, wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> Once the fabric glue was dry, it was time to put the donut together. The easiest way I found was to put hot glue in the center of the donut and then stack the colored piece on top. Then I did a thin line of hot glue around the outside of the donut, making sure to leave the top open. That way we can add the stuffing at the end. So here's the vacuum sealed bag of stuffing and I just wanted to show you guys how much it actually expands. You get so much stuffing in here, it is crazy. It immediately starts to kind of puff up and then the easiest thing to do is just start pulling it apart. Now we can start stuffing the donut. You still want to go a little bit gently because you don't want to rip the hot glue. I think if it was stitched you could go a little bit more firm, but softness is key. Then I applied a little bit of hot glue at the very top and then pinched it together. Look at how cute this is! I love it so much! Now that we know the basics, we can move on to all our other animals, starting with the panda. The panda doesn't need very many supplies, so I got those all together. We don't need the ears until later, so I'm gonna move them aside. I started by hot gluing the icing to the bottom. Then I attached each of the eyes. Then I added the face with black puffy paint and little white eye shines. I thought heart shapes would be cute. And I added little pink cheeks, which I immediately regretted. <laughs> and of course, we need to add some sprinkles to this blue icing. And when I was done, I left this alone to dry. Now we can finally add our ears. So I attached them to the bottom of the donut with some hot glue. 
And then I completed the donut in the same way I did the rabbit. I love this panda! <laughs> it's so cute! Now we can move on to the narwhal, which might be one of my favorites, because I love narwhals. So I gathered together all of my supplies. We don't need the cone or the tail yet, so I'm going to move those aside for now. I attached the little fins first. These are supposed to be kind of 3D, so I just applied glue to the ends. Then I attached the icing. Next I added a little face with my black puffy paint. And I gave a cute little pink smiley too. <laughs> it's so tiny. <laughs> the smile is so stinking cute, I can't handle it. <laughs> And little pink cheeks, of course. These ones I don't regret. <laughs> it totally adds to the face. And finally, I added some sprinkles. I'm not entirely sure why I even decided to do pink, because the pink does not show up on the pink frosting, but hey, me and you, we know they're there, right? <laughs> totally pointless, but they're there. We all know it. I let this swim away to dry. Now it's time to make our cone. So I added a really thin line of hot glue to the edge of the cone and then wrapped it in on itself. And I added some stuffing and closed up the opening with some hot glue. This is really starting to give me flashbacks to my ice cream doll girl. Um, and it kind of makes me want some ice cream, to be honest. <laughs> if you haven't seen my ice cream doll girl, make sure you check her out. I think you guys would absolutely love her. I'll put a link in the iCard and in the description. Then I attached the cone at the top of my donut with some hot glue. Now, here is where I made a mistake. <laughs> and you can see I started out on the right path. I put the ice cream cone at the front of the narwhal because that's where the narwhal has a horn. Um, and then I don't know what happened. I don't know what I was thinking. I decided, you know what, no, the cone needs to be on the other side. What if the ice cream spilled on the back of the narwhal? Well, now the cone is on the narwhal's butt. It's not on its head, it's on its butt, so it's no longer a narwhal. I've accepted this, you need to accept it. It's a whale. <laughs> it's just a whale. Or a dolphin. Um, so RIP to the narwhal donut, it's a whale now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel so bad for this poor narwhal. <laughs> I ruined his elegance. I'm so sorry. Why did I turn it? Why did I do that? What was I thinking? No one knows. I don't know. And I finished the rest of the donut in the same way I finished the others. He's just a happy little non-narwhal. <laughs> He's so happy about it. He's blissfully unaware that he could have been a glorious narwhal, but oh well. <laughs> I still love him to pieces. He's so cute. He's so happy. Look at that face. And now moving on to Georgie, I mean Pineapple Parrot. Definitely not Georgie, definitely Pineapple Parrot, except we all know that it's Georgie. And I'm having a hard time thinking of any other name for this little guy except Georgie. And I'm sorry, Mariah. <laughs> pineapple Parrot, it doesn't even look like a parrot. It's ridiculous, it's obviously a chicken or a duck. Like a parrot? What parrot? I mean like a cockatoo maybe, I don't know. Anyway, moving on from the not Georgie. I gathered all the supplies and got started. We're not gonna need the little wings or the leaves yet, so I put those aside. I attached the little beak and added some definition with some orange puffy paint. And little eyeballs with my black puffy paint. And of course, little pink cheeks. Now this was the tricky part because I needed it to look like a pineapple, but I didn't wanna use a ruler because I was afraid I would smudge the paint, so I had to freehand these straight lines. <laughs> I think they came out okay though. I had a pretty steady hand. <laughs> Look at how cute that is. Look at how cute this not Georgie is. <laughs> now using the same technique that I did for the bunny's tail and the top of the carrot, I took the leaves for this pineapple and folded them into little tacos. And then I put my needle and thread through and tied it into a knot. Then I did the same for each of the wings. Then I attached all three with some hot glue. I think the wings are like the tiniest bit crooked. Actually, no, they're like super crooked. They're really super crooked. So it looks like he's waving now. <laughs> Can we just accept he's waving? He's saying, hi, I'm not Georgie. <laughs> then I finished the rest of the pineapple donut the same way I did the others. Look at how cute. I love this one. I absolutely adore this little pineapple parrot. <laughs> 
cough, cough, Georgie. <laughs> Although we all know it's not Georgie. <laughs> now it's time to move on to this chicken or rooster. Is it a rooster or a chicken? Cine, cine, what is this one? Cine chicken. Cine chicken. <laughs> I guess he doesn't have the little gobbler, so he doesn't make him a, a rooster, right? But he has a thing on top. I know nothing about birds. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I gathered all of my supplies and got started on this little chicken. Using the same sewing technique as before, I made ruffles out of the red circles, the white circles, and the yellow circles. Ta-da! Then I attached them all to my donut. And I added the beak up towards the top. Now is a brief intermission. I discovered right after the Georgie page that they actually suggest some different faces you can stitch onto your donuts. And this is like towards the back of the book. So by this point, you've already made like four of these six donuts. So of these four out of six have like normal faces. And then all of a sudden they tell you, hey, by the way, you can make these cute faces, which of course then gave me the inspiration like, well, yeah, Duh, I've been doing boring faces for all of these. I need to do a cute face. I don't know why they waited this whole time to show any of the cute faces because the back of the book has all the normal faces. The front of the book has the normal faces. The first few pages have all the normal faces. And then it's not until towards the end of the book that you see any of these cute faces. So I thought that was kind of weird. But I digress. Back to the project. And of course, after all that, I decided to go with this expression. Is he happy? Is he tired? Is he excited? I'm not really sure. <laughs> I think he looks excited. Now I added my little wings to the sides. And as I'm adding these wings, I can't help but hear Cuban peep in the background. And I'm kind of sort of just like dancing in my chair as I'm editing and dancing in my chair even now as I'm doing the voiceover. Look, he's even dancing. He knows. And of course we need the cute little chicken feet. I keep calling him a him. But it's a chicken, so it's a her. I am so sorry. She does look like she's wearing a little cowboy hat, though, which is adorable. Then I finished the donut the same way I did all the other ones. I can't stop looking at these little ruffles. I look at her, and I just want to dance with little maracas. She is just making my day. I kind of wish I had turned her into a little rattle, so then she sounded like a maraca. And yes, I'm dancing even as I'm telling you this. <laughs> So cute! And now we are finally on our last pet, the Coco Kitty. This one is super cute because she has a little icing stripe, but the directions say that the icing yarn is white, but what they gave me was actually pink. And I think this is another example where they changed the project last minute, but they didn't necessarily change it in the book. So, you know, just kind of small editing issues. Now, I don't know what I was thinking. I had already made five of these donuts, so why did I mess this up all of a sudden? <laughs> but I glued the outside of the donut before I glued the inside of the donut. So now I have to try and stick this hot glue nozzle inside the donut hole to glue the middle. I don't know what I was thinking. I did the other five perfectly fine. So why did I do that all of a sudden on this one? Like, what the heck was I thinking? I don't even, I don't even know. I realized I forgot to add the ears as I was stuffing it. So then I had to try and add the ears. Like, I don't know how after five of these donuts, I messed this one up. I don't, and this one I was really excited for because I love cats. So I don't, I don't know what my problem was. I did decide to put it all together and stuff it before putting the icing on or making the face because I knew that the puffiness of the donut would affect how much of the yarn icing went on it. So I wanted it to be puffed up already before I applied the icing. I have no idea if that made sense at all. <laughs> you know, it's okay. I just have a YouTube channel where I tell you how to make crafts and I don't know how to explain the crafts to you. That's normal, right? That makes sense. So to add the icing, I just did a big zigzag in hot glue and then laid down the yarn on top of it. This hot glue gun makes the hot glue come out super, super hot, so I wasn't really that worried about it cooling off before I had a chance to apply the yarn. Although the very, very, very end of it did give me a little bit of trouble, but that's okay. Then I added a cute little smile with my pink fabric paint and a cute little pink nose. And I gave it one big eye and a squinty eye. And I think the squinty eye kind of goes along with that messed up ear. <laughs> so maybe it got pet a little too rough on that ear. <laughs> and I gave it a white zigzag stripe and some whiskers. 
And this kitty is all done. Tell me in the comments below which donut was your favorite. I truthfully am not sure which one is my favorite. I think the bunny is my favorite because bunnies are my favorite animal. And I am bunny DIY, so I mean... I, and oh and she matches my hair so I think the bunny might be my favorite <laughs> but the narwhal kind of is a close second or the non narwhal <laughs> um only because I messed it up so bad I don't know what the heck I was thinking <laughs> and it reminds me of my ice cream girl doll if you like this video then make sure you give it a big thumbs up because believe it or not those likes really help me and my channel out and don't forget to subscribe while you're here you can click the bell to get notified when I post I upload videos every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you see any craft kits in the store that you think I should try, make sure you tell me. You can tell me in the comments or you can reach out to me on Instagram. And thank you so much, Caitlin Eaton, for suggesting this one to me. I'm so happy I found it and I'm so happy I made it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Love you a latte.